The world is a large and complex place with many plants, animals, and people living together and sharing space and natural resources. With so many people and so many challenges facing the world today, you may be wondering how you can make a difference. Well, our story starts with bees. This video will help you understand the role bees play, the danger they are currently in, and the simple, fun steps you can do to make a difference. Hi, I'm um, Steve Hendricks. I'm a uh, professor emeritus of biology here at the University of Iowa. And over the past 20 plus or so years, I have been intensely studying uh, wild bees, solitary bees uh, in the Midwest. And uh, I must say that I'm quite pleased uh, to be invited to participate uh, in this community art project uh, involving bees, where where people like yourselves will get a chance, I hope, to make uh, some bees out of recycled material. Um, one of the things that I think makes this really fun is that it gives you a chance to just let your imagination run wild. And what I wanted to do here, at least partially today, is to uh, tell you a bit about what Mother Nature has already done in terms of pollinator diversity uh, and some about their ecology. Uh, before we talk about pollinator diversity, though, uh, uh, it's good to remember uh, why it is that you've been attracted to pollinators in the first place. And of course, the most obvious reason is that they are very noticeable creatures and they appear around us almost uh, any time you're outside when it's not winter in almost any place. And they get your attention by uh, swooping by uh, like butterflies will do. They get your attention uh, if they're bees by zooming around between flowers. So you notice these organisms. The thing that to remember though, that's important about these pollinators is that they do provide an essential ecosystem service by completing plant reproduction for hundreds and hundreds of plants that are very important to uh, us as a species. It is the fruits and vegetables that these pollinators are helping to uh, plants make that makes our diet both nutritionally balanced um, and interesting. That list includes things like coffee and berries, squashes, almonds and other nuts, apples, and many fruits. It's a really long uh, list. Now, uh, an enormous variety of different organisms are involved in pollination. Uh, so you have really many, many kinds of different models uh, to choose from that you might base uh, anything that you decide to make on. Uh, it, it, we have bees, we have butterflies that are pollinators, we have true flies that are pollinators, we have bigger organisms like birds and bats. So that means the pollinators you choose to make, they can be big or small, they can have two or four wings, they can have big wings, they can have small wings, they can have jet wings that go out behind them, they can have long antennae, they can have short antennae. You've got a lot to choose from. Of all those various kinds of pollinators, the most important ones in terms of numbers, the most numerous are, are bees. And so that's why the focus in this art community project is, is on the bees. You're probably familiar with honeybees, but that's just one species. They're the only ones that live in colonies with thousands of workers. Generally, these are man-made boxes, so quite obviously they're more or less domesticated. And they are, in fact, very important because they are major pollinators of agricultural crops that are grown on a large scale. So they are very important for that reason. They have a number of problems that they face in terms of threats uh, from viruses, uh, from lack of resources, from lack of genetic diversity. They also are going to provide the honeycomb structure to which you'll attach these bees that you make. Um, for the purposes of stimulating your imagination, we really do need to talk about the solitary bees or the wild bees. They don't live in colonies. 
the females nest by themselves. The females go out and forage on their own. They get pollen, they get nectar. Uh, they create reproductive cells in which they lay an egg in either tunnels in the ground, holes in the ground, or in hollow stems of plants. There are 20,000 species of these wild bees globally. We know from our work that there's about 300 species right here uh, in Iowa. The diversity of these is enormous. There's metallic green bees, there are large bumblebees that are quite furry, there's workers, there's tiny little uh, sweat bees, these small black ones that sometimes will get on your skin, there's megachylids that have uh, collecting hairs on their abdomen. All of these bees, these many, many species, are very important as pollinators in our gardens, our produce farms, uh, and our native uh, prairies. So uh, for bees, however, they are under a lot of ecological stress, mostly from humans, both directly and indirectly. For bees and many of these other pollinators, loss of habitat is critical. So anything that helps uh, save or restore native habitat will help our pollinators of all varieties. Quite a bit can be done just by changing uh, our habits slightly. Um, mow your yard less. Uh, use fewer chemicals. Let a few weeds exist. Even some of those will help our pollinators. And actually leave a few unattended areas in your yard yard and let it just go back wild a little bit. That can all help. For an ambitious gardener, we have also shown which prairie plants support large numbers of bee species and uh, we can help you with that. So I hope everyone is ready to enjoy the bee uh, project installation or even go make some bees for display. And when all the plants are in flower, stop for a moment and watch those amazing bees. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Bee Project. My name is Elena Smirniotis. I am a multimedia, printmaking, and installation artist. Growing up, I spent summers in my grandmother's village, well known for the beekeeping. I remember myself roaming through the open fields, bursting with wildflowers, and bees. These early memories reoccurred in the Bee Project, developed during my Grantwood Artist Fellowship at the University of Iowa. I am very concerned how quiet my backyard garden became during past few years, with only a couple of bees pollinating plants. The Bee Project is an outdoor, site-specific installation that uses modular structures to resemble a beehive with sculptures of bees attached to it. The structures are welded from carbon steel mesh and in the shape of hexagons and painted yellow to look like a honeycomb. Yellow hexagons have similar sizes but vary in height from 3 to 6 feet. They are placed in a variety of compositions in different locations with consideration of the existing landscape, buildings, trees, roads, and paths of human traffic. The Bee Project adds a vibrant and meaningful element into the fibers of the city, park, or nature center. The project was designed during the pandemic and takes in consideration COVID-19 safety measures. It found the ways for the community to be creative, connected, safe, and most importantly, included. This is how it works. First, we build and install hexagonal structures outside in designated locations. Second, you will be making a bee sculptures from the recycled materials, mostly plastic and metals. 
We provide online instructions and videos on how to build your bee and what tools and additional supplies can be used. Third, the bee can be attached to the structures at any time of the day with zip ties left on site. Couple things to keep in mind. The sculptures will be outside. Do not use materials such as cardboard or paper or glue that will be damaged by weather. Use plastic or metal or other long-lasting materials. Use hot glue guns instead of glue. Keep size of the bee between 7 and 30 inches. Make sure all parts are well connected and can endure some wind. Do not make sculptures too heavy. It will be difficult to install them and to keep them in place. This project can be done in collaboration with your friends, family or neighbors. You can make more than one bee. This is ongoing project and you can add your bee at any time until the end of installation. You are encouraged to be creative and to come up with your own ideas and designs. I understand that this art project alone will not save bees. However, it is a way of giving people the inspiration to improve their local environment and to make places thriving and sustainable. I believe that the great art can come from adversity, but also that adversity can be overcome through the art.